on in. Come on in. Come on in. Now come on in. Now come. Sorry, y'all. Y'all know I'm weird. Whatever. Hey, everybody. What's up? It's your girl, Bondi Blue. So let's go ahead. Let's go ahead. Hey, everybody. What's up? It's your girl, Bondi Blue. Okay, follow me on Instagram. And let's get into the video. Hey girl, hey. Ugh, all right, what's going on? <laughs> hey everybody, how you doing? I hope you're all having a really good day. Sorry for the delay, child, but y'all know it's always something with them damn dogs, okay? Like as soon as I get ready to come and do a video, Olivia and Ju won't get all tangled up with one another, child. Make my nerves just bad, girl. You know, but it's okay. We're here. We're here. Make sure you like the video on the way in. Okay? We're about to get into some things. Okay? Because I feel like for the longest we've been talking about how problematic Tyler Perry movies are. And I feel like this is about to be the perfect opportunity to talk about exactly why. OK, and this is some of his best work. You know what I'm saying? Like if we want to if we want to criticize, I feel like we should absolutely try to criticize some of his best work. child. And this is one of just some of the best work. child. OK. Oh, thank you. Trusting God for becoming a member. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, T-Baby Sha for becoming a member as well. I see all y'all in here, tonight, you know, today, child. I say tonight. Okay, hey, Nolarese, thank you for moderating. Hey, Julian, Tam, Bernie, Rihanna. Hey, Scotty. Hey, my love. Queen Zara, Chanel. Okay, uh, Tanisha. Tanisha, girl. Miss Hazel Eyes, Turner. Y'all know I'm going to say something wrong. Uh, hello, I am Kayuna. Okay, Kayuna. Is it Kayuna? Okay. And you got VD. Listen, we're going to get into it all. I just wanted to say hello. Okay, Shani A, if I miss you, it's not because I don't care. Okay. Um, Shout out. Okay, come on now, new sub. Come on, Lotus Rose. Welcome, love. Okay, welcome. If you become a member on YouTube, do you get the same notifications as your website? Yes. Yes. Okay, you just get it on the YouTube situation youtube has a, a community page and you'll just get it there okay so girl why did i get married oh no not the picture disappearing child okay this is this is listen this is why you gotta go in a preview mode so stuff just can't be moving on you out of nowhere girl okay hold up let me let me put it in preview mode <laughs> okay Oh, what you say? Uh, I watched the Now That We're Grown Poetic Justice and you had me up at 3 a.m. rewatching the movie. Oh, girl, these people need to, you know, throw me a shout out every now and again, getting they, uh, <laughs> getting they movies extra shine, girl. Okay. Um, oh, all right. Come on now. Okay. So let's go ahead and get into it. I don't want to, I don't want to waste too much time because y'all know how these can go on and on. Okay. Um, so the movie starts off. We have author and professor Patricia, okay, a.k.a. Pat, Janet Jackson. Miss Jackson, if you're nasty, okay? Now, listen, I'm going to say this about Janet, girl. Janet may not come out the house often, but when Janet come out the house, girl, Janet come out the house because Janet was acting her ass off in this. And the fact that we just did Poetic Justice, it definitely had it fresh in my mind. That Janet is a really good actress, girl. Like, you know, I know she was penny on good times, but still, girl, like, it's just when you see it, you just be like, damn, Janet, you really gonna be that good at acting? I feel like it's underrated. You know, I feel like it's a little underrated. Um, girl, I'm sorry. Hold up. Because don't you hate when you be wiping them and then you put them on and they still ain't all the way right? Hold up. Because y'all know I'm blind. Okay, here we go. <laughs> there I go. Okay. So, like I said, author and professor Patricia speaks to her class about a yearly vacation she, her husband, and their friends take. Okay, she actually wrote a book about their different relationships. So, the people in her class have questions about the different couples. And this is how we get a breakdown of each couple and what their issues are. Okay? 
So we have Terry and Diane. She's always looking for a way to cause friction as far as I'm concerned. She's worried about if they should have left their daughter behind. Then she's taking phone calls from her assistant, Monica. Okay, which I thought it was so funny that uh, her assistant's name was Monica, but Terry's assistant was Monica on Girlfriends, but her name was Pam on this. Girl, I, I can't. Because every time I kept thinking Monica, I was thinking about, you know, um, his assistant that she thought was having an affair with him. But really, that lady was just, you know, helping you out because you was at work all the time. Okay, but look, we'll get more into that later. Um, <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> no, sorry, y'all. I just got distracted for a second. So... Terry and Diane, like I said, she's always looking for a way to cause friction. She's worried about their daughter. She's taking calls from Monica, the assistant. Terry complains about her priorities. Diane doesn't care. She says, it's just the two of us, okay? You happy now, Gina? Damn. And I would just like to say, I don't know what Diane likes about Terry. Like, I understand that he's dependable and all of that. But it, it almost feels like, girl, you don't even really like that man like that. You don't like that man like that. Why, why are you trying to stay with that man instead of going be, you know, go be single? Or maybe you can go and find you a man that you actually like. But you don't like Terry. Like, I'm going to need for you to like the nigga a little bit. And it just kind of feel like from the first movie to the second movie, Diane does not like Terry. She doesn't. It doesn't seem like she really wanted to ever be with him. We gonna do Why Did I Get Married too? Because me and Lyric, we watched it last night because we had totally forgot about it, girl. But we had to watch it again. And I just kind of feel like this is definitely one of them relationships that didn't need to continue to make up to break up over and over again. They just needed to, you know, go ahead and let it go. Okay, spend some time apart. But you know what? We'll have that conversation later, all right? Sheila and Mike... They really had the class worry, child. The class was like, oh, chill and Mike. <laughs> okay, the white kids, they've never seen anything like this. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. They absolutely have. White men are just as terrible to their wives. I don't know where everybody gets this shit that white people don't have these toxic masculinity issues, but they absolutely do. Okay, where do you think we get it from? Anyway, so Sheila and Mike are getting on a flight, y'all. Getting on a flight with Sheila's friend, Trina. Mike tells Sheila to sit in front of he and Trina. Meaning that he and Trina are sitting next to each other. Trina's like, wait a minute, Sheila. Come sit next to your husband. Because she has to pretend like she's not fucking him. So, yeah. And this is when he says, uh-uh. I, I don't want to be uncomfortable. There's a sign seat for a reason. Then the passenger next to her being so bothered by her size, which was a real like annoying moment for me. I kind of felt like, sir, if a smaller woman was sitting next to you, you would be all in her space. So it's real annoying to me that you felt the need to go and tattle to the stewardess about her being bigger. And then saying that a person of her size needed to purchase two seats. Bitch, you got me fucked. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm sorry. I know a lot of y'all are fat phobic. So y'all feel like fat people should have. I don't feel like that. Make these seats bigger. Make these seats bigger. I don't care what y'all are talking about. Like, no, I don't believe everybody needs to be wilding all on the outside obese. No, I don't. But at the end of the day, I'm not that big and you must be too close to me on these planes as is. You too close. It's already too close. For regular sized people, it's too close. Y'all, y'all could, y'all could, y'all could stand and give us a little, a little something on the plane. I feel like it's a money situation so y'all can get as many seats in the plane as possible. Which is annoying to us. Like, what is going on with the airline industry? Y'all is just over there fucking up and getting bailed out. I don't see no Republicans complaining about it. Got to catch those flights though, huh? Anyway, Mike says that Sheila should just drive. Now, mind you, it doesn't seem as if Trina has paid for a motherfucking thing. Trina is coming on this trip for free. Mike and Sheila purchased three tickets. This is the part to me 
Where even though, yes, yeah, Scotty, Scotty, me and you were here. You want to hit Ike Jr. in the fucking throat. But Sheila, this is the moment when you should have been like, well, Trina, we tried. Trina, we tried, girl. But I'll I'll catch I'll catch you when we get back. Sheila, I don't know what type of mental abuse you have been going through in order for you to sit there and act like that was okay. But Trina would have had to go. Especially since she said she purchased the tickets months ago. So I'm going to bring my single friend on a couple's trip. And then I'm going to get off the plane. Deep plane. Embarrassingly so. And then I'm going to drive. To Colorado. Up a motherfucking mountain. In a snowstorm. With gospel music on the radio. Because I got to save my marriage. Bitch, you need to save yourself. Because that seemed like mental illness. That seemed like mental illness. And I'm going to tell y'all how I don't feel like Sheila really changed all that much. And how I feel like they taught you this lesson to just be loyal to the Lord and he'll send you a man that you know that's that that you are uh, deserving of a better man until his bitch ass lose his job in the second movie and start acting crazy this is why Sheila should have found herself this is why Sheila should have went up the mountain to find Sheila but Sheila didn't go up to the mountain and find herself Sheila went up to the mountain and found a lumberjack that was going to help her walk up and down that mountain until she lost that excess weight. And we ain't mad about it. But you needed to spend some time alone so that you would be good. Instead of you, you know, wherever this man, that's where I'm going. Wherever this man, that's where I'm going. I he had the nerve, the unmitigated gall to turn around and be an asshole in that second movie. And I was just like, that's because Sheila was supposed to find herself and not another man. But see, y'all don't want to work there. Y'all want to stay with the Lord sending y'all a new man. Okay, girl. All right. I don't know how you going to find a better man if you haven't figured out why you chose the last stuff ass in the first place. Y'all see me kind of, you know, trying to cut out my curse and y'all fuck me. All right. Sheila definitely needed therapy. And it does not make sense to me that no, it does make sense because black people do stuff like this. Got a friend that's making so much money, so successful as a therapist. And you just lie, lie, lie whenever she tell you something. When really your ass needs to be in therapy because you got some motherfucking issues. Girl, you let them deplane you. You let them deplane you. The moment. Oh my God, y'all. Love of my life, my soulmate. Half of me is that what don't mean anything uh, at all. Uh, who am I to say you love me? That's not that part, but there's a bounce version to that song. I, I had never heard the regular version of that song for real. Like it played in the movie, but it wasn't until they turned it into a bounce song that I knew it. Okay, I'm sorry, y'all. That was going to happen at some point in this, in this movie review. Okay. I was so upset in that scene, y'all. It don't matter how many times I watch that scene. I'm so upset every single time that she let that occur. Because it really do be feeling like, you know, women allow these things. And then they sit there and feel powerless like there's nothing I can do about it. Is there not? Is there not? Oh, girl, you could have told Trina to go. You could have told Trina to go. And if Mike, you know, wanted to go on this trip, he going to make sure Trina go. Oh, we all ain't going. If I'm not going, ain't none of us going. We all going to get kicked off this motherfucking flight. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So we hop back. Okay, we back to Pat and the students is asking questions of black Female student raises her hand to say she can't believe a woman is educated as Patricia is friends with someone like Angela. I said, well, I know something. 
y'all gonna miss me with feeling like just because somebody is loud or somebody has a bad attitude that means that they're not smart honestly it means you usually me especially for angela to me Angela was too fucking smart. That I, Look, I had to get that one in. That was her problem. Angela was too smart. When Patricia explains that she studied chemistry and when she couldn't get a job in corporate America, she created her own hair care line and then opened up her salon. That's not something that a stupid person does. So to say that you can't believe that the therapist who went to school for psychology, you can't believe that she's friends with the chemist that created her own hair care line. <laughs> Girl, I was just sitting up here like, y'all really gonna miss me with demonizing people that refuse to just allow the beating to happen. Now, don't get me wrong. Angela absolutely took it to another level, but y'all, most of this movie, people were fucking with her. And when she would respond, everybody around her is like, Angela! And it pissed me off because I'm Angela, y'all. I'm Angela. Angela is me and I am Angela. Now, I don't like to get into arguments in public. I don't. That's not my thing. That's embarrassing to me. So that's the one thing I'm not going to do. I'm, I'm not fitting to argue with you in public unless you didn't like really, I feel like, took the disrespect to an ultimate level. And if you take the disrespect to an ultimate level and I feel embarrassed, then I'm going to embarrass you. So that's how that works. But when we find Marcus and Angela on the train and she drinking and talking real loud about how she tied to his baby mama and all of that shit, I ain't like that. I did not like, y'all, I can't stand an inconsiderate ass person, person on any type of public transportation. I saw a video online this week of some women on the plane playing their music on a speakerphone on the phone. And, and the white lady is down there with her hands over her ears stressed out. And I'm like, bitch, I'm the white lady. Y'all ain't about to do, it. nah, nah, nah. Y'all not about to make it a black thing to be completely annoying in public spaces with no consideration for other people and then act like that's a black people thing. Bitch, earbuds, AirPods, they sell a shit down at the airport they usually have uh earbuds that you can purchase on a plane and y'all really sitting up here disturbing the peace on this long uncomfortable probably germ infested flight and you making it worse by making us listen to what you won't listen to bitch i don't want to listen to what you want to listen to i don't want to turn up on the plane i want to go to sleep so angela on the train screaming and hollering about baby mama this and baby mama that I low-key felt like the gay boys, even though the gay boys was working on my nerves because I can't stand how y'all do racist shit and act like you should just be, you know, admonished from it because you're gay. They were doing that type of shit. Oh, homegirl, snaps. Uh, look, y'all better be, you know, just saying all kind of little stupid shit. And I was just kind of like, ooh, gay men, please. I understand your discomfort in this moment, but stop making it a roll in the neck Shaniqua moment in all of this. Like y'all don't know white people that get drunk and get loud and belligerent. I am from New Orleans. I know a whole bunch of loud and belligerent white people. So please stop acting like that's a black people thing. Stop. I don't like it. Okay. Anyways. Marcus is embarrassed for all of us the way she's screaming and hollering on this damn uh, uh, train. But I do agree, she has every right to be this upset. The difference between me and Angela is that when I'm in public, I'm going to shut it down. I'm going to drink and all of that, but I am going to detach. I don't know you, you don't know me until we get there. Now, when we get there and we around people that I don't care about arguing around, I'm going to tend to your ass something terrible if I have to. But I don't like to get loud in public. I don't like that. That's not cool. Um, stereotypes. Tyler loves them. Yes, he does love a good stereotype. He absolutely does. The, you know, the racist gay white guy loves it. I mean, they had scarves on, the cute little dog. It was just like Jesus Christ. <laughs> like a stereotype down, like a goddamn cartoon, Tyler Perry. Like a goddamn cartoon. I was waiting on him to make one. So... They asked Patricia how she and her husband Gavin are doing. And Gavin is standing at the door saying, well, we're about to be late for our flight. That's how we doing. That's not an answer to our question, Gavin. But okay, y'all got to go. Terry and Diane get to the house first. And meet Sheriff Troy, okay? Lumberjack, okay? She goes upstairs and starts working instantly and then falls asleep with her laptop open. 
Terry comes and, you know, pulls the cover over her and then her phone rings. And he picks it up and tells her assistant, Monica, they're on vacation. Don't call this weekend. I didn't like that. This is the part I didn't, I ain't gonna lie. I may have not liked Diane for the whole rest of the movie. But at the end of the day, what you not gonna do is interfere with my fucking business. Because everybody knows what it is to be trying to like get to a certain place in a, in a career and you do not want to miss out on certain things. And if you are in a certain job field, you have to stay on top of certain things. And yes, you should absolutely have your boundaries and put them in place because those jobs will replace your fucking ass very easily. But I also feel like for me personally, that would be an issue. I don't need nobody you know, telling me, telling my assistant not to tell me stuff, especially if it's important and it's something that I need to know. And then I find out later on and I end up getting in some type of situation at my job or in my career because you didn't told my assistant not to call me. No, he needed to, to, to push back a little bit. He needed to on that. She should have heard him out, but that was a, a step overboard to me. Um, and that's just my opinion on it, wrong. Okay. So Gavin and Patricia get there next. Pat goes to wake up Diane and Terry says how everyone is doing well in their careers and he's really proud of them. Gavin says, but Terry was supposed to have about four kids by now. And then Terry says, I mean, you were supposed to have at least. And then he stopped himself because we find out that Pat and Gavin had a little boy. Pat got in a car accident. The little boy died. Okay. So it's fresh. And I just kind of felt like, well, see, this is why you don't throw out comments like y'all was supposed to have four kids by now. That's why you don't say shit like that, because you were supposed to have at least one by now and you did and now you don't. And you don't want to be reminded of that. So why would you then say to them that they were supposed to have four kids by now? In that moment, I was kind of like, yeah, see, this is why y'all need to learn to stop imposing that on people. Terry was like, shit, talk to Diane about that. And, and as an adult woman, how much people impress on couples. I saw the little cute interracial couple from Love is Blind that first season. He just posted about how he is so tired and he really wishes people would stop asking them when they're going to have a kid. Because you don't know if people are having a hard time conceiving and how, how triggering that shit can be to be having a good time, enjoying yourself, and people just bring that up out of nowhere. So that's why I'm like, yeah, Gavin, you set yourself up for that one. And then you make everybody feel sorry for you when you do that. It's giving manipulative from the very beginning. It's giving manipulative from the very beginning. Okay. Um, Angela and Mike show up arguing. Let me tell y'all something. Angela and Mike have the healthiest relationship out of everybody. Even in the second movie. <laughs> Even in the second movie, I feel like Angela and, and, and Mike, I'm sorry, Angela and Marcus, Angela and Marcus, I'm sorry, y'all. Angela and Marcus have the, the best relationship out of everybody. He cheats. She's loud and ignorant. But ultimately, them people love each other. That's why they argue like that. They argue so that they can fuck. That's the whole point of what they do. Okay. And once old boy stopped cheating and got a job, child, he was still cheating. But you know... <laughs> At least, you know what I'm saying? At least they made up. Everything was all good. You know what I'm saying? But it felt like they were really into each other where I feel like Diane don't really like Terry like that. Patricia and Gavin, I feel like losing their child disconnected them in a way. And I also feel like it caused a lot of resentment. So they, once their child was gone and he resented her, it was over. And they should have just let it be over. But... Here they are, okay? But she cheats too. She does cheat too. But we don't see none of her cheatation. And she wasn't cheating in the second movie. She cheated on him in the first one because he was cheating on her with Keisha. It was a catchback. It's what those toxic ones of us do, okay? We, we gonna get catchback. Now, I don't know why the fuck she didn't wear a condom for her catchback, but we can get into that in a moment, Okay? But yeah, um, I still feel like they were more honest with each other, like upfront about their feelings and they were more into each other. Whereas the other couple seemed 
indifferent to one another. And I would rather two people like bump heads passionately, but then also be into each other for real, for real versus couples that pretend like everything is cool and they really don't fuck with each other like that. You see what I'm saying? Um, so yeah, Angela wants a drink and Gavin points out it's the middle of the day. And I'm like, but it's vacation. The fuck? Gavin is very judgmental. Okay. Angela asks why they are all, uh, all the way in the sticks. You know, black people don't, uh, like water in any form. And I'm like, that's not true because you love Jamaica and that ain't nothing but, you know, water and some rocks. <laughs> okay. But Jamaica would have been nicer because it would have been warmer. Okay. Child, I miss Jamaica. I, I'm gonna have to make my way back before the end of 2023. Um, so yes, Sheila. Sheila is struggling up this mountain listening to gospel music. Needs something to uplift her, okay? She's going up this mountain to save her marriage. Angela shares with the women that Marcus' ex drives her crazy. And one of the main issues is the way his ex talks to their kids about Angela because they have a boy and Angela and Marcus have a girl and their kids are around the same age. So, and I'm sure they go to the same school. So it seems like the baby mama gets both of them sometimes. And I don't understand why that's happening. But Angela was complaining about the way the, the baby mama talks about Angela to her son and therefore to the daughter. That's a huge issue. That's not okay at all. Like, honestly, y'all, when, when the baby mamas be doing all of that extra shit like that, I feel like it should be, a, if we can't come to a common ground, the money's in a mailbox, drop the baby off by your mama house, we don't need to talk. We don't need to see each other. But see, Marcus was still fucking her. So that's where the problem comes in. That's why she felt like she could keep disrespecting Angela. And a lot of you men do that. A lot of you men who have baby mama drama and all of that is because y'all are still having sex with them and because y'all overlap women so much. Are y'all afraid to be alone? Oh my God. I, child, the way I'm thinking about somebody specific right now. Oh girl. Anyway. Angela insists that Marcus do something about it. Marcus says he's going to do something about it, but then he, he doesn't, you know, because he says, you know what I'm saying? So she knows he's lying. Meanwhile, Terry is telling Marcus how bad the arguing between he and Angela is. And Marcus says, listen, that's just how we do. OK, that's our thing. OK, besides Terry over there ain't getting no coochie and ain't, ain't had no coochie in. And what would they say? Three months. He ain't had no coochie in three months. You wish you was arguing. Because if you was arguing, you'd probably be f***ing too. <laughs> okay? And then Marcus proceeds to ask Terry for a shot because he's been burning for three days. I said, the, the, oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Like, that's crazy, y'all. He says he got it from cheating on Angela. And... Obviously, he could have given it to her. And Terry is like, you know, women don't find out as soon as men do. You need to tell her. He don't want to tell her. Mike and Trina get there. And everyone is like, where is Sheila? And they're suspicious of Trina's ass. What type of friend are you to let her drive up there by herself so you can ride on a plane with Ike Jr.? Mike says he made Sheila's fat ass drive because he wasn't paying for another ticket for her fat ass. I hate him. Everyone is worried about Sheila but Mike, even the other men. And this is what I did like about this movie. The men did seem to hold the other men accountable. Like, they didn't, like, for major shit, they didn't just go along with it. Not really. They actually said something. Like, everybody was like, bro, you just let the, the woman drive up here by herself? Like, what the fuck wrong with you? Like, you know, they said something. They didn't really do shit, but they said something. Because a lot of dudes would just laugh and go along like, that's okay. Angela says that she don't trust Trina and she glad she got her Vaseline and her sneakers. I said, girl, me and you both. So then they 
talk about Pat uh, Patricia receiving this award in eight months in DC and she invites everyone to come. Angela keeps saying that I'll drink to that. And Marcus says, you drink to nouns. And she says, well, maybe I'll drink to you getting a damn job. Okay. Hey, y'all. Marcus paid a bill. I'll drink to that. Hey, y'all. Marcus paid the mortgage this month. Like, I'll drink to that. And you know, in this moment, even though she went in on him to the point where everybody is embarrassed on his behalf, did he have to start with her? Like, why is it okay for you to make a comment about her drinking? Because she kept saying, I'll drink to that. So what? Y'all know the lady tipsy. Everybody's on fucking vacation. Were we supposed to be sober? Y'all boring. I don't want to travel with y'all. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm from New Orleans. And it's not an everybody New Orleans thing, but it is heavily New Orleans to enjoy your liquor. And if I am on vacation, I don't want nobody checking me as a grown ass adult about my liquor. Excuse me. So when he said that shit, I was just like, now, Marcus, when she go for your neck, you going to act like, oh, my God, why are you talking to me like that? You don't think that's triggering for her for you to constantly be trying to embarrass her in front of people, specifically because when he said you drink to nouns, Trina and, and dumbass Mike over there start giggling. And laughing at her. And it's like, dude, why are you giving people an opportunity to rag on your wife? Like, I'm just saying, like, he, I feel like he really, everybody glazes over the way they will try to embarrass Angela for being herself or being honest. And then when she pop back on that ass and she do it harder than you did now all of a sudden you're a victim child if there's nothing i understand in my life i understand that feeling <laughs> if there's nothing i understand in life y'all i understand the feeling of minding my business being fucked with and then when i pop back at people now all of a sudden they're a victim and i've gone too far or you could have just left me to fuck alone you could have made that choice. You didn't. Act like you know who I am. Anyway. I'm saying, y'all, it's very frustrating. So she points out how he works for her. He says that she wasn't saying that when he was playing bro pro ball. She says two years of pro ball, eight years of broke. Everyone says she's not fighting fair. Trina and Mike are sniggling and giggling while everyone is reprimanding Angela for the way she talks to Marcus. Even though they're saying y'all, it was really towards her more so than it was towards Marcus because nobody said shit when Marcus made his comment. Um, the women drag Trina into the kitchen with all that giggling and sniggling that her and uh, Mike are doing. I don't know what y'all over there giggling and sniggling about, but you're going to bring your ass in the kitchen where I could watch you. I said, I know that's right. And I'm not the type to be worried, but I see what's going on here and I don't like it. Terry says, if I don't get none because of you, Mike, I'm whipping your ass. Because he admits to the men that, you know, she fine, ain't she? And Marcus was like, you hitting that? And he kind of, he like, I plead the fifth. But they, they picked up on it. They know what's going on. If you don't say no, nigga, it's yes. Marcus says, Mike, man, you been the man. And Terry was like, hold up, stupid. How you gonna uh, uh, big him up for that shit? Or admire him when your ass sitting over there burning. This is how you got in that situation. Won't you calm down? I appreciated Terry for that moment. They ask if it's Angela who gave it to him and he said no. And it's so funny that we all know it really was Angela, but he did not know that because he was already dipping out on her. Hilarity. Hilarity. Thank you, Miss Cookie Ray, for the super chat. Hey, Bondi, I must have low-key manifested this now that we're grown. I was just listening to Janet and thinking about this movie about an hour ago. Uh, thank you for the super chat. You probably did, girl. Okay. I also noticed that in that second movie, it seemed like they repurposed uh the backgrounds or the instrumentals to again because i kept hearing a they didn't do the they didn't do that part but i kept hearing that that same melody that they have on the again song from poetic justice 
Tyler Perry always got to play a old, you know, pay homage to something. Thank you, Tess, for the super chat. Hit that like button, y'all. Okay, I hope that's all the super chats. Okay, so where was I in my notes? Okay, they ask if Angela. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, Mike says, "What your wife don't know won't hurt her," and I was just like, "Mike, you're a piece of shit." He, he has an STD that is hurting her. What are you talking about? Terry says that's why black women have the leading stats on HIV because of men like y'all. And you know what's so funny? That you'll point that out to them and then still be friends with them. And that's the problem. That you know men that do shit like that, but y'all never really hold these men to task. Y'all just make little comments about it and shake your head and all of that. But you don't ostracize them. You don't publicly shame them. You say it to them around other men where you can protect their egos. But the truth of the matter is, why is it that we should be protecting people's egos when they don't give a fuck about other people's lives? Like, that's crazy as hell to me. Mike asked if any of the men have ever cheated. But of course, we know Marcus has. But Gavin and Terry say no. They've thought about it, but they haven't. I wish that Gavin would have cheated, though. Because I feel like Gavin held so much frustration in that if he would have actually acted it out in their marriage, maybe he wouldn't have turned into a psycho in that second movie. Um, but Marcus puts Terry on blast for not getting no ass from Diane in three months. Like, you won't be putting everybody else's business on Front Street. When we talk about how you say Diane ain't gave you no ass in three months. You ain't had sex in three months. That's a long time not to have sex with somebody that you laying in the bed with every night. Diane do not like that, man. Sheila makes it to the police station where Sheriff Troy is. There's trees down up the mountain, even though Sheila was about to try to climb it. I say, girl, if you don't go sit your ass down somewhere, get warm and talk to this nice man rushing up that damn mountain because you know you shouldn't have let Trina and your husband fly up there together. That's why you was rushing up there, okay? Anyway... So Sheila has to stay the night with Troy and he explains how he's an army brat. His dad bought the house that they're staying in. And when he passed away, he just decided to stick around. That's how he became the sheriff. Troy asked why her husband wasn't traveling with her because he wouldn't have allowed his wife to travel alone, which I understand the care, but I also feel like that's something that's a bit triggering for me. Like I, I heard about what happened with Demetria Lucas so I often feel like, you know, it's a mixed bag with traveling. Like you do want to be able to experience the world by yourself sometimes without always feeling like you're some fucking infantile that can't take care of yourself. I, I'm often made to feel like that and I don't like that feeling. So even though I appreciate protection and people caring for, for me and my safe my safety, I also feel oppressed by Feeling like I can't travel or go anywhere without somebody trying to do something to me. Like, that's exhausting. I'm just saying, y'all heard about what happened to Demetria Lucas? The uh, Y'all y'all know she do a blog. I ain't gonna really get into it like that. But she travels, she's been traveling all over Africa. And this guy, like, popped up at her, like, at her room. You know what I'm saying? Like, on some creepy shit, you know? Um, So, like, I... I understand the fear, but I, ain't, I don't really like how y'all be. I wouldn't allow my wife to travel alone. Sir, allow, allow. Is that the wording you want to use? Okay. Um, or I wouldn't let, child, whatever. He asked if she's hungry and she says, don't I look hungry? And he says, what that's supposed to mean? I'm so glad he checked her on that because I was really annoyed by the constant um, fat shaming that she did to herself, the self-deprecation, the jokes on her own, you know, on her own ego like that, like on her, you know, jokes against herself, against her own self-esteem. Like that just made me feel bad for her. Why are you doing that? And then when she said, I did it because I wanted to beat Mike to the punch. I was just like, geez. Also, there was so much more that I don't know where Sheila was traveling from. There was so much more that happened between Sheila and Mike in their marriage that was abusive. And we really didn't get um, as much backstory as I would have liked. 
Like Tyler Perry really does have the space to go back and, and do why should I get married and go back to the couples at the beginning so we can see what we did not see the first time around. That would be cute. Tyler Perry, I just gave you an idea in case nobody told you to do that. Anyway, so Sheila, um, you know, Sheila was talking to Troy, getting to know him. It's real cute or whatever. Please stop doing the, the self-deprecating in front of people. It's embarrassing. It makes us feel bad for you. Mike refuses Angela. Um, they because everybody getting in the bed, and Angela was trying to get the meat, get the meat, get the meat, get the meat, and he was like, no, because he gotta wait to get that shot. Now that we know that she knew she gave it to him, she was fucking with him on purpose. That's hilarious. So <laughs> Diane is pretending to be so angry about Mike and Sheila that she isn't in the mood to have sex. I'm like, Diane, do not like that man. Gavin and Pat are having a Disneyland night, you know, laying in the bed in their flannel pajamas, talking about how much they love each other and, you know, what they're going to do about their wayward friends. And it's just like, child, if y'all not fucking or fighting, I'm going to need for y'all to go to sleep because y'all ain't doing nothing. Y'all ain't doing nothing but judging everybody. Meanwhile, holding everything in. Okay. Angela sees Mike creeping into Trina's room. Dirty bastard. So the next morning, Angela wants to tell Sheila as soon as she gets there what she saw. But for some reason, Pat and Diane want to see what type of headspace she's in first. She's not going to be in a good headspace either way. What y'all think could have happened with the travel? Like, what y'all think happened? Like, I, I was so confused by what headspace they thought she was going to be in that was going to make finding this out okay. But okay, girl, fine. Then Trina comes in with the men from a hike. And Trina says, Angela belongs in the kitchen. And Angela said, yeah, you belong on the corner. Need a pimp? Clocking it. Clocking it, bitch. I'm clocking it. Everybody looking at Angela like she crazy. But that comment about you, you belong in the kitchen? Oh, yeah, bitch, that, that, that was shade. <laughs> that was shade, okay? Pat, at, because women like Trina look down on the women that cook and clean and take care of their households because they look at y'all like y'all stupid. They, you're just supposed to run these niggas for their pockets. They supposed to pay somebody else to do that. And in all honesty, I like cooking, so it's different. But, and you know, everybody can't clean. You should be able to do these things. But I do feel like women should have adopted that mindset. Sheila should have had that mindset. Sheila, you shouldn't have been cooking and cleansing and all of that when that nigga had money. Got you over there being a mattress and a mule and shit. Uh-uh, uh-uh. You should have been like Trina. You pay somebody else to do it. <laughs> you don't appreciate it no, no way. Anyway, I'm sorry, y'all. So... Pat asked if Mike called Sheila to make sure she was okay. And he says no, because he don't give up. Is everybody, is anybody paying attention? The cognitive dissonance be making my head hurt. People see this man don't care about this lady and proceed to keep asking him if he, if he did something that would show care. I, I don't know what to do. Trina says, I'm sure she's fine. And Angela says, trick, was anybody talking to you? They start throwing food at each other. As soon as she would have threw food at me, if I was Angela, baby, when I tell you the Lord wouldn't have been able to keep me from getting to that bitch eventually, I would have acted like it was all good just so I could run up on her and yank a wig. Throwing food at me when we know you fucking our friend old man right up under her nose. Oh my God. <laughs> girl, make my, make my nerves so bad, girl. Make my nerves so bad. So then Sheila and Troy walk in. Y'all know Sheila's oblivious. Divas, girl. Mike, y'all, Mike didn't want to hug her. Gavin gave her a better hug than Mike did. She introduces Sheriff Troy because she didn't invited him to breakfast thinking that she didn't found a man for Trina. Girl, Trina don't want that man because she got your man. Sheriff also had the medicine for Marcus, but y'all know it was for Terry. And Diane was like, what's that for? And he was like, something I needed. My business, bitch. <laughs> Sheila and, uh hold on, hold on, hold on, I'm sorry. Yeah, Sheila brought Troy for Trina. Trina looks uncomfortable and everybody sees it. Everybody sees it. I saw that. Mm-hmm. So this is another thing that worked on my nerves. Everybody could see the shit and Angela was the only one that was voicing what they were seeing in front of everybody. And I was just kind of like, 
And this is the, this is the thing that work on my nerves. The only person in the room that is honest and real enough to say what everybody else is seeing and thinking and then y'all get mad at her. Ain't that some shit? Oh, Lord, it just make my nerves so bad. Mike is making comments about Sheila's weight. And when Angela responds, everyone acts like something is wrong with her. Everybody know you know how to be in the kitchen, baby. Everybody act like it's Angela. Like Angela's the problem because she don't want to hear her friend being talked down to in front of everybody. Like y'all are crazy. The first thing Sheila does is make Mike a plate. Here you go, baby. Sheila, we want you to know that this is your fault. And I'm going to tell y'all I blame the church. Y'all ain't going to believe me. Y'all ain't going to like that I said it. But see, I, I blame the church because I think that this is what y'all breed. Y'all breed young delusional women that just want to, you know, find a good man and have what God, you know, God intended for them to have. I'm a cook. I'm a clink. And I'm going to ignore all the signs of this man being disrespectful because the Lord sent me this man. I'm just saying, y'all notice how that was a part of Sheila's story arc. Every time you turn around, she praying for this marriage. Bitch, pray for yourself. Pray for yourself. Okay? He should have made her a play. That's what I'm saying. Lady been traveling all night. Lady could have died out there. Could have frozen a fucking car. And y'all up here just acting like everything hunky-dory. Hunky-dory. Diane gets a call on the landline and now she's mad because she found out that Terry told Monica not to call her. She asked if she can talk to him and Terry says, no. <laughs> that shit was so funny. <laughs> Sheila said that she's trying to lose weight. Sometimes he looks at me like, okay, okay, yeah, I'm sorry, y'all. I just thought making notes and don't tell y'all what happened. So y'all know everybody went shopping, right? Trina wanted to go shopping, so the ladies are going shopping. And Sheila is confiding in the women about how, you know, she didn't want to find anything because of how bad she feels. She got to lose the weight, the way Mike looks at her like she disgusts him. But she keeps saying, but it'll get better. It'll get better. Angela wants to tell her about Mike and Trina, but Diane and Pat stop her. Then Trina comes over talking about, I found this lingerie in your size, girl. Mike is going to love you in this. And when Angela says, is this trick serious? And pushes her. That was the exact response that was needed. And everybody act like Angela was tripping. We not even going to talk about the white lady coming up to them in all of their full fur coats talking about they don't keep any cash in the store. Bitch, everybody has on a full fur coat, a real one, not a full one. And you going to come up to them and act like they about to rob your store because they got into an argument because of drunk white women that come and, and visit down here. Don't get drunk and argue in y'all store. Child, I've seen Jersey. Don't play with me. Anyway. This moment was so disrespectful when you think about it because Trina knew that that Sheila was going to get clowned like that. She knew that shit and she set her up for that. Like, that's terrible. That's some terrible shit. Honestly, she should have got her ass whipped. When Sheila puts the lingerie on for Mike, he laughs at her and tells her that she looks like a tent. She looked like the cow that jumped over the moon. Trina lied. You need to smack Trina. And they was just laughing and laughing and laughing and laughing. He's just laughing. The music turns up. Sheila is sitting there, you know, lays down, looks so hurt and miserable. They playing that fucking music. Don't know anything at all. Who am I to say you love me? Okay, oh girl, and uh, <laughs> my heart for him, my love for him. I'm not worried about the rest of them. You always think you'll get girl like I could ever listen. We ain't gonna get into it. Trina lied. Listen, listen, Trina needed that ass whip, y'all. And I'm not gonna lie, y'all, nothing about that scene was ever funny to me. Every single time that scene plays, I want to jump out of my skin. And punch Ike Jr. in the throat. I do. I really, really do. Diane tries to argue with Terry. 
about him telling Monica not to call her again. And he says he thinks that she's starting arguments with him on purpose so that they don't have sex because she doesn't want to get pregnant. Mind you, the lady didn't already got her tubes tied. She just don't want to have sex with you. That's why she's starting arguments. Terry tells Marcus he needs to not have sex with Angela until the shot kicks in. And he needs to tell her because women don't know as soon as men. Mike tells him not to tell her. Mike gives him bad advice. Gavin starts talking about the 80-20 rule, which is so funny to me. Because essentially I feel like, yes, the 80-20 rule is, is very, very true. But I also feel like some people aren't supposed to be in monogamous relationships. And because that is what is expected in our society everybody tries to force fit a shoe that's not their size i really do feel like that i don't feel like every person should be in a long-term relationship should be in marriages should have kids i don't think every person is intended for that i don't and i think the evidence of that is the fact that people don't have kids all the time people don't get married all the time and even when they do shit be fucked up so that's how you know it's not for everybody but y'all try to force it on everybody now the 80 20 rule yeah of course you're not gonna always get everything you need from one person that makes sense OK, and you shouldn't be willing to treat your 80 like shit over 20. No, absolutely not. But some people don't need to be in monogamous relationships. Some people don't need to be in relationships at all. I feel like Ike Jr. didn't need to be with nobody. Mike didn't need to be with nobody. Mm -mm. Break, Be single, sir. Pay these girls for their coochie and send them on about their way. And pray somebody is there for you when you're down to the, to the nursing home on your way out. Do what you want to do, but don't, 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 don't get some poor woman to give her life to you for you to just mentally and emotionally abuse her until you get tired and throw her away for a younger model child. Y'all going to get tired of giving y'all lives over for these niggas. Y'all going to get tired of that. Okay. Because that's exactly what everybody in this movie was doing. <laughs> Girl, listen, anyway, I mean, not giving their life over because everybody had their own thing going on, but Sheila, Sheila is giving up way too much for Mike. That 80 20. Anyway, um, so they all have dinner and they're toasting to love. But then it all, it all falls down. It all falls down, child. Okay. Troy picks up Trina's napkin and Mike asks if Troy's the big time sheriff in town. So every time something is going on between Trina and Troy over there, Mike is getting upset and it's showing. And everybody at the table can tell what's going on except for Sheila's delusional ass, okay? He was being condescending when he asked him that question about being a big sheriff in town because it looked like it don't pay much money. Trina says it's really beautiful out here and Troy offers to show them around and she was like, I can't do that. And it was so funny because Gavin and Pat was like, oh, well, we would love that. So bitch, you think he's trying to show you around because he wants you, but he would show anybody around the, the town that they're visiting if they've never been there before because it is a beautiful place. Duh, bitch. He's the sheriff, which is why the couples were all like, yeah, we could do that. That sounds great. Mike makes a comment about how much money it is. And Troy says that he does his job for the enjoyment. And that's cute and everything. But when you do a job for enjoyment and not for savings and not so that you can have money in the future and all of that, when you're not thinking about those things, Troy, you probably shouldn't get married and have a kid with somebody. I know I'm going into why did I get married too on y'all right now. But just in this moment when Troy is telling y'all that he don't care about the money and he does shit for the enjoyment. Later on, when you pissed off about the fact that you don't have a job and you struggling right now, maybe it should matter how much something pays. <laughs> I'm just saying. If you're going to internalize not making money later on, then you absolutely need to care about it, okay? I'm just saying. If you're not going to care, don't care. But don't be out here internalizing it and resenting your wife for it later on when you're sitting up here talking about you doing a job for the enjoyment and not because of how much money it makes. Just pointing that out. So Angela says that, well, Mike does it for the enjoyment, don't you, Mike? Okay. And Mike says, you need another drink, don't you? And she says, and you need some condoms, don't you? And he says, trust me, you don't want to go down that road with me. 
and everybody tries to change the subject because once again, everybody sits at the table and pretends it's not shitting all, you know, rain, rain and shit right now. It's raining shit all up and through this dinner and everybody acting like they don't see it and don't smell it. It's crazy. Troy and Trina are talking and Mike asks, what's so funny? Angela says, Mike, can you please let these two single people have a private moment? And <laughs> look, Sheila was like, yes, I agree. Just as delusional as she want to be not paying attention to a goddamn thing. I swear for God, y'all not going to ever convince me that I, I, I'm something wrong with me because I be paying attention and shit. And I be looking at people's facial expressions and body language and all of that and feeling out the energy. You goddamn right. I need as much of a heads up as I'm going to it because you ain't gonna never have me sitting here looking like i was just like bitch is are you okay are you not seeing what's going on at the table right now i agree angela says yes maybe they can take a drive later and then mike says trina ain't going nowhere with him angela says well why why can't this single man and this single woman take a drive and everyone kind of makes it about Angela's drinking all right Angela that's enough no more wine Angela and I was just like the fact that because I was drinking some real good Cabernet Sauvignon last night so I was just kind of like bitch if you don't get your hand off my wine <laughs> okay she was like nah fuck that let me take another drink because y'all around here keeping secrets at this damn table and mike was like okay we, we want to you want to out some secrets since everybody want to talk about what i got going on y'all want out some secrets because angela says you know what i'm tired of this shit angela i mean sheila do you know why trina can't go anywhere with troy or any other man for that matter because she's sleeping with yours sheila and sheila chewing her food just a smiling <laughs> jesus and then here's her name <clears throat> <laughs> what my man <laughs> no no Ike Jr. is staring lovingly at this raggedy bitch across the table because she you know she pays attention at this moment and she looks at him it's true. It's true. whisper because Jill Scott can act her ass off too and he says He's looking at Trina. He says, yes, yes, but I'm not the only one with secrets at this table and proceeds to Martell Holt, his whole fucking friend group. I said, God damn it, Martell. Is this one of your favorite movies? Because this is exactly what you did to all your homeboys when, when Mel outed you for uh, doing what you was doing. This nigga went around telling everybody's business. Y'all, let me, hold up. Let me, because I want to make sure I, I got it right. Hold up. <laughs> let me make sure. Okay. Uh, uh, uh. Terry, why don't you tell Diane that you got a DNA test on your daughter because you wasn't sure that she was yours when she got pregnant because y'all hadn't been having sex? Diane, won't you... Tell Terry that you got your tubes tied and didn't tell him. Ain't that what you told Sheila? Because that's what Sheila told me. <laughs> Bitch, you ain't supposed to be pillow talking with your husband to that degree. You're doing too much. Especially if you know your husband ain't shit like, like Mike ass. Okay? Gavin, inform your wife since y'all acting like y'all perfect. And this was the low down dirty dog part. Because if you love these people in any way, shape, or form... How could you throw this out there like that, knowing that this is about their dead son? Then people's son died, and he literally said, at this table with these people still trying to heal, Gavin, tell your wife how you came to my house crying, asking how could she be so stupid and not strap your son in his car seat. They're going to act like that didn't happen. Marcus... Tell this woman, and I pray it sets you free, how Terry had to give you a shot for VD. Angela says, oh, you got VD? How long have you had it? Was it Keisha? He do like that. Like, yeah, it was Keisha. Nah, you didn't get it from Keisha. You got it from Walter. He was like, what, I ain't gay? No, I slept with him. I got a shot a week ago. I was just waiting on you to say something. Boom. Mm -hmm. 
Bitch, if that ain't everybody's favorite moment in a whole movie, you know why? Because for the longest, in all of the movies, everybody's a Sheila. Everybody's a Sheila getting cheated on. And Angela said, not only did I catch back, but I did to you what you would have did to me. I gave you an STD. I'm sorry, y'all. I don't want to live my life like this. Like, I don't want to do this type of shit. Like, Angela and Marcus can keep giving each other STDs while cheating on each other. I don't want to do that. Like, that's not what I'm interested in at all. But at the same time, boom. <laughs> I'm sorry. That nigga had that lady stressed the fuck out. Y'all seen ain't never talked about that shit again, right? You ain't never heard that brought up again. You know why? Because she probably dealt with cheating when he was in the NFL. And now that she's paying all the bills, he's still fucking the baby mama because the baby mama make him feel better about the fact that he ain't got as much as he used to have. Ooh, if that don't sound like Martell Ho. God damn, Marcus and Martell is almost the same person except for Marcus is not a, not a, a bad person. Anyway, thank you, Sunita McLean, for the super chat. Great review as always. Thank you for always keeping us entertained. Love from Canada. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Thank you. Okay, come on. Ah, for the $139.99, like I'm selling y'all something on a TV screen. Thank you, Dequatia. I would have stopped effing with Mike after that dinner table, but they all continue to be friends with him. Same thing as Martell Holt. It does not make sense. I'm sorry, y'all. Let me go back to live mode because I didn't realize that I, those weren't actually on the screen. Thank you, Dequatia. And thank you, Sunita, let me put it on the screen. <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate it. So, yeah, I don't know how they continue to be friends with Mike after this. Just like I don't know how Martel Holt and, and, and them are still friends after everything that has transpired. But that's because he still be holding shit close to the vest. Y'all seen that video that came out Queen Sheba did talking about how Martel still owns part of Sculpt with, with Mar uh, Marceau, not Tisha. Y'all, that shit. That shit tickled me. I was just like, not Tisha lying this whole time. You don't have no percentage in the business. You just put your name on the loans. And now it's really in Martel, in, in Marceau's name. That is hilarious. So Marcus strangles her. Okay, Marcus strangles uh, Angela and says she's so goddamn evil. And I'm just like, so because you would have done it by mistake and she did it on purpose because you probably had done it to her before. Somehow that makes her more evil than you. I was just like, that's bullshit. So everybody's like, let's leave. So let's cut the, the trip short. And Mike stands up and said, that's the best shit y'all ever said. Baby, go pack our bags, says that shit to Trina. Everybody in there is like, baby, go pack our bags. Nigga, what? He turns to Sheila and says, listen, I'm sorry, but I want a divorce. And I'll be more than fair. You can have the rental property. You can keep your car. I've had Paco put bars on the place. It's a rough neighborhood. I'll handle everything else. Hello, hello, <sighs> whatever. He gets up, she takes the bottle, yeah, on the back of his fucking head, he passed out. And I'm Angela, I hope he's dead. That way she could have got a life insurance policy off your puss ass. Y'all, I can't stand it. I cannot stand it. So y'all, everyone leaves early. Marcus and Angela left separately because they was about to kill each other. Terry and Diane talk about him testing their daughter because when she was pregnant, they had only had sex once. She asks, what were the results? And he says, what you mean? She's mine. And she says, huh, really? And then puts her earbuds in. I'm like, girl, you so exhausting. Sheila went to a motel and Troy checks on her. She's distraught, sitting there. Okay, hair all over the place. <laughs> just, just as, just, you know, they playing the uh, giving up. It's one of my favorite songs on Sparkle, y'all. So hard to do when you really love someone. 
giving up is so hard to do and I tried but I just can't turn them loops okay I ain't gonna finish it because they don't do all that on this movie but y'all know that was also on Sparkle and that's my shit but anyway she's distraught and Troy comes in and she says you know he emptied my bank account I have $87 to my name I don't know what I'm gonna do. And so he says, Well, if you got time, I'd like to show you something. I said, You gonna show it a dick? <laughs> no, this is a church movie. Brings it to the top of a mountain. It's where I talk to the Lord. Yes, it is a Donny Hathaway. Yes, 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 yes. Donnie Hathaway know he could sing a song to make you wanna cry. Ah, oh, Lord. Troy tells Sheila it's a great time for a new start. Because she says, I have no life without him. And I'm just like, that's the problem right there. That's the problem right there. Let me tell you something, baby. Let me tell you something. Ain't no such thing. Ain't no such thing. You absolutely have a life without him. It's just up to you to live it. That's why I don't agree with that, you know, giving my life over to the family shit. Bitch, if you don't have something in your life for you. Because people act like, oh, your family will miss you. You know, the jobs will just, you know, send you up the river. I said, child, your family will send your ass up the river too. It's important to have things for yourself. It's important to have things for yourself. My life without him. I have no life without him. Girl, that's crazy as hell. Putting no idols before God. Child, because you know that's what they're doing. But but that's the thing. That's the thing. Putting no idols before God, that really means don't put nobody before yourself. That's what that really means. But I'm going to leave y'all alone on that. <laughs> because telling somebody that God is a man outside of themselves has made them think that men are like gods. So that's not good neither. Which is why the God should look more like you. But I'm going to leave y'all alone about it. So Gavin and Pat deal with their son dying in a car accident. You know, she trying to cook. And he, you know, he come in there with the picture. And he want her to look at the picture because she doesn't ever want to confront what happened. And she just jumps off it. I'm dealt with this. I'm dealt with this, Gavin. I'm a doctor. Okay? And then she gets into it. She's like, I strapped him in. You know, because she knows he resents her. This is my fault. I know this is my fault. I hate me too. She's going off the deep end. And Gavin's trying to talk to her. You know, Gavin's being a perfect husband at this point, right? You don't have to be strong by yourself, babe, you know. But she was like, I strapped him in. But I was in a rush. And I didn't secure it. I didn't check. And now he's gone. Y'all, that shit is hard to get over. That shit is hard to get over. And I don't care who you are. I don't care who you are. Losing a child, bro, I couldn't. That's not how that's supposed to go, bro. Especially so young. Oh, my God. That shit is crazy. Like, I, oof. That scene always gets me, y'all. I could deal with a lot of things, Gavin, but this, for real. Even as a therapist, she still proceeded to hold everything in. Pat was a perfectionist, but so was Gavin. And then Gavin resented her for being a perfectionist because it made him feel like he had to be like that. But essentially, that's what men do all the time. Blame women for the decisions you've made. He blamed her, like ultimately. He blamed her for the son. He blamed her, you know, when the divorce happened. He, you know, I was waiting on you. I remember him saying that in the second movie. He was waiting on her. And even in this movie, it felt like he could never really reach her like that. So that's why I feel like their marriage really should have been over when their son died. I hate to say it like that, but it was irreparable from that point because he was always going to resent her, even though he was trying not to. She was going to always resent herself. I think a piece of it is knowing that I can't really be with you knowing that 
I feel like it's my fault that our child is gone. And when I look at you, I think of our child. When I'm, we're together, our life together reminds me of that child that I will never get back. And really, I want to leave you and all of it behind because it hurts too much to stay. That's what I think Pat really did. I think Pat tried to stay. And I think eventually she couldn't anymore because it hurt too much to stay in their relationship knowing what happened. Too much resentment, too much guilt, too much water under the bridge. They needed to move on. And it seemed like it was so hard to do. And I understood. We're going to talk about that in the second one. Because, you know, they holding on to each other in this moment. But, no, I am. I am going to review too. But I, I, I need to make notes for it. <laughs> I ain't make no notes for it. Um, but, yeah, no, they absolutely needed to let it be. But they were trying to hold each other up and support each other. And I feel like that's the thing about Tyler Perry. It's always happy ending. It's always let the family stay together because that's what's best. And it's like, but that's not what's always best. And people don't have to be physically abusive or they don't have to be as bad as Mike for a relationship to not, you know, to, to not stay together. Like people feel like all of these terrible things have to happen in order for you to realize that you and another person don't need to be together anymore. When really... You don't need all of this extra shit. You can just know it. And it's just time to go. I'm just saying. But anyway, <clears throat> Marcus baby mama storms into Angela's shop, walking all, <laughs> walking all hard and shit with her curls not, not, you know, combed out. I can't stand when y'all hoes have the rollers and y'all take the rollers out, but y'all don't comb the curls out. You got to comb the curls out, bitch. You got to shake the curls. You got to comb the curls out, girl. You know? Anyway, so <laughs> she walk in there. Okay, where's Marcus? Ya ho, ya ho. Like just going off on Angela. Angela going off on her. Y'all know I kick ass in here every Tuesday. You know who you work for. And she get on three-way with Pat and um Diane telling them she is right here in this office and child we don't know what she there to talk to Marcus about she ain't there to talk to Marcus about nothing she want Marcus Marcus don't want her and she mad so she's showing up at his job to act a fool in front of the the wife because you want to embarrass her at her job because you jealous that's that's really all it was you you jealous of her business you jealous of her man and you walking in here extra hard acting like you somebody special to make you feel better about the fact that he chose her and he don't want you and that makes you feel bad about yourself that was that baby mama issue that bitch need therapy too and she need to find her her own man because that's just pathetic for you to be walking in here stank walk like that <clears throat> That was real pathetic, girl. Take that back outside. Nobody asked you for that. And so when they on the phone, Sheila called. Sheila working down to the general store in Colorado. And they're asking if she okay, if she needs anything. She says she's fine, y'all. She's figuring it out. And then she says, Diane, tell Terry I said happy birthday. Bitch, Diane didn't forgot it's her man's birthday. Diane didn't forgot it's her man's birthday. Was that today? Girl, please let that man find somebody that like him. Please let that man find somebody that like him. <laughs> Girl, you do not like that man. Oh, my God. Child, meanwhile, Sheila is noticing how fine Troy is. I want, I, I want you, but I want you to want me to. Yeah, I want you to know, baby. Just like I want you. Ooh, ooh. I love a good uh <laughs> Marvin Gaye on the soundtrack, child. Mm. Child, looking at the nigga collarbone and everything. Okay. And this is when she was like, oh, you work out? And he was like, yeah, you can come with me if you want to. She was like, my big self. And he was like, listen, if you want to work out, you, we can do it together. We can just start off walking, okay? And then we love that. Child, don't y'all love, oh, she was overweight. The nigga worked out with her. He saved her. Bitch, you should have been walking your damn self. <laughs> like, you know, it, it was just, Sheila is just so childlike. So childlike. Troy was rebound. Get through divorce. Make me feel pretty again, guy. Yes. And the fact that she, you know, decided to have a baby with the nigga and marry him all for him to resent her for moving out of the sticks. Child, listen. 
it, at the beginning it was given she needed to make her way she let first of all she didn't fight for anything in a divorce that was her first mistake in my opinion, because it meant you didn't have anything. So all you could do was be dependent upon another man until you were able to catch your footing. Not to say that she didn't bring anything to the table. Sheila seemed very smart, but it just kind of seemed to me like you was just hopping from one man to the next being pulled by your, your heart or your pussy. And I'm a need for you to be up here. Sometimes I'm a need for you to be up here. Sometimes. Okay. Not Latasha Scott, anyone. <laughs> y'all a miss, girl. Y'all is a miss. Uh, so Angela and Marcus are arguing in front of his baby mama's house because they go and pick up the kids. Once again, can somebody explain to me why they allow for Angela's child to be babysat by this bitch? Girl, anyway, Keisha come out. I told you bringing this hoe to my house and she going with the help, help. How, like just gonna keep doing that shit and so you know and Angela's arguing with Marcus Marcus just says it's a no okay now he turns around you know first he went off on Angela before she came outside told Angela you know uh it's not about the money okay it was my money that helped you start the damn business okay it's so sad when you women have been so used to losing you don't recognize when you've won I love you and I've always been there for you and I was just sitting up, and then Keisha come outside and he read Keisha down. Keisha, don't you call my house if it's not about the kids. Don't you talk to our kids about her. Don't you do that no more. He finally said it, y'all. He finally popped off and did what Angela had been asking him to do since the beginning of this motherfucking movie, which was like eight months ago, y'all. Movie was like eight months ago. But let me tell you this. You know why I didn't like this speech about how you women so used to losing, you don't recognize when you've won? You were fucking Keisha Marcus. They let you scream on them because women, especially like, a, you know, loud, aggressive women. Child, we loves us a strong man that can raise up on you every now and again. Not all the time. Be respectful, nigga. I'll shoot you in your kneecaps. But, you know, strong energy. We like it. We strong. We need you to be strong, too. Okay? Everybody's an adult. So I understand. Oh. You know what I'm saying? He in his tight jeans and his tight shirt raising up on people. It's a turn on. But let's not forget you were sleeping with both of them. That's the reason why Keisha acting like she ain't got no sense. That's the reason why you can stand here and reprimand these two grown women when you was fucking both of them. And that's the reason why they fighting like this. Talking about y'all fighting like y'all both damn five years old. Five-year-olds don't have to deal with their baby daddy's fucking pee. Like, what are you talking about? They, they, they're not acting like five-year-olds. They're acting like women who have their head gone over a man that don't know how to handle his shit. He found his backbone. Child, I don't know why he needed to find a backbone. He need to find a condom. Seemed like he been had a backbone. It's called a, a, a big dick. You been had it. Like, how she winning and he cheating? The fuck? <laughs> That's what I'm saying, y'all. That's why it's such bullshit. Are we forgetting he choked his wife? No, we're not forgetting that he choked her. It was considered okay because she told him that she gave him VD. So when he turns around and chokes her because it wasn't the other way around the way he expected it to be, then it's okay. How many times we got to tell y'all it's okay for black men to do these types of things to black women? There's always a, a reason to validate it. That's why it was glazed over and made a funny moment. Him choking her became a funny moment. Not the domestic violence that it was. Let's really look at this, shall we? Y'all probably got together because y'all had crazy sexual chemistry. Both smart, right? He gets into football. You in college to become a chemist. This is starting out good. Both people are on equal footing. Then what happens? He loses his job. But in the process, he's still being a hoe. He's still cheating. He's still driving you crazy. You helping him in every way you can. And the nigga still cheating on you. Not only is he cheating on you, but he's cheating on you with his disrespectful ass baby mama who keep running up, disrespecting you in your business and with your children. Somehow, we're convinced by the end of this movie that she's winning simply because he decided at this moment to stop fucking Keisha.
Girl, I guess. <laughs> I guess I guess you ain't realize you won, girl, because he decided that day to stop fucking Keisha. Girl, go to hell. Anyway, when Diane gets home late from work on Terry's birthday, he's enjoying some cake and ice cream with his assistant, Pam. When she gets up to leave, Diane asks, are you guys having an affair? His assistant says, I'm about to go because I don't know which y'all on up in here. You better leave and don't you come back to this house. I see you later, Terry. Like they were ignoring the fuck out of her. I thought that was hilarious that Pam just kept looking at her like, bitch, I'm just so disappointed in you, but I'm just going to go ahead and go. This is a shame. I'll see you at work tomorrow, girl. <laughs> I mean, I'll see you at work tomorrow, Dr. Terry. Okay. Gonna talk about, I want that whore fired. You don't come in here making no goddamn demands. Okay. First, he goes and check on their daughter because she wasn't worrying about the baby. And then they go downstairs to the bedroom and he says, I have been begging you for months to spend time with me. And she says, where is this coming from all of a sudden? The fuck you mean all of a sudden? Been begging you to spend time with me and your daughter. Okay. I am trying. I don't know what you want me to do. He gave you a very clean list. He said, spend time with me and your daughter, have sex with us, bake me a cake for my birthday, bitch. I don't know. And then she says, well, I am open to a suggestion, but can we not do something that requires me going back into the fifties? It's like, bitch, you do not have to really bake the cake. Just go pick it up from the grocery store and be home in time to sing happy birthday to the man and suck his dick on his birthday. It's really not that hard. It's not that hard. You don't like him. Just admit that. You don't like him. Just admit it. Talking about her career is doing better than his. So he's having some testosterone issues. And you know what? This is when I realized, oh, so this is that trope. See, my homeboys that, you know, do halfway decent, you know, take care of their responsibilities, have good jobs, have their own places, you know, <laughs> don't do ignorant shit. You know what I'm saying? Then, you know, they don't really listen to Manosphere talking points. You know what I'm saying? Like they don't really know who Kevin Samuels is. My, my good guy friends, you know, <laughs> we had this conversation and they really seem to feel like they're paying for the generation of moms that did so much that the daughters were like, I ain't doing none of that shit. So they get in relationships and the men feel like my homeboys will feel like they were giving more in the relationships than the women were because the women are so scared to be taken advantage of the way their mothers were. And I heard them out on that. And I do feel like there are women that are absolutely like that. And I'm like, the Diane is that trope. Diane is a trope that I watch my mom struggle so hard. I watched her be dependent upon a man. And yes, I want a man. I want all those things because that's what society tells me I should have in order for me to be successful. And I want to be successful. So I'm going to get me a husband and a kid for sure. But essentially, that's not really the life that I want. I want to, you know, enjoy my life. I want to be with a man that I'm attracted to, that I want to have sex with. I don't want kids. I want to, you know, focus on my career and call for the big bang, you know, bing bang, you know, whatever. When I want it, like that's the life she really wanted. And honestly, I feel like a lot of women don't want to be wives and mothers and they feel like that's the role they have to play in this society. So they do it anyway. And they get put in these situations and then they figure out it's not what they thought it was going to be. It's not what they wanted. They thought it was going to make them happy at the beginning because everybody in society is telling you to get married and have kids. That's going to make you happy. And it doesn't make you happy. <laughs> it doesn't. You know what I'm saying? I think that's what it's a whole bunch of things to it. You know, it's layers, it's nuance. But essentially, I feel like she's the trope of a woman that I do not want to be a, a doormat for no man. So I'm never going to put myself in a position to be completely soft and vulnerable because I've seen how these men do. Especially when you see it around you. Like, Terry, you might have sense, but you hanging with a whole bunch of stupid ass niggas and then, you know, birds of a feather flock together. You know what I'm saying? But essentially, I feel like, yeah, I feel like the rich auntie wasn't a thing at the time. So who Diane really wanted to be was the rich auntie. That's who she was in the Christmas movie. In the Christmas movie, that's who she really wanted to be. Yes, I feel that way. I am. I ain't being no wife and mom. Screw societal pressure. Yes, screw that shit. 
Shit not meant for everybody. I'm too busy being a man. That's why I can't find keep one trope. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, no, I'm not too busy being a man. That would include having a dick. And I don't have one of those. I just take care of myself. Because see, to me, I feel like y'all define being a man as somebody that takes care of themselves. <laughs> like to me, yeah, oh, she too busy being a man. You mean taking care of herself? What the fuck are you talking about? What's she supposed to be doing? What's she supposed to be doing? Because y'all don't want to pay no bills. Y'all, the men are so scared that the women are going to use them for the little, what, the little $25,000 a year they make. <laughs> Child, making these women go half on first dates and shit. Like, what? Why are y'all mad at the boss babes? Oh, because y'all can't control us with y'all lack of money? Oh, okay. Keisha, thank you for the super sticker. Thank you, love. Um, Her husband and child were just accessories for her. Yes. Yes. It seems that way. It does. Diane really bent to the societal pressure. She should have picked another life. Okay. But either way, he tells her he tired of her shit and he takes the ring off, put it on the bed and say he moving out. And she was like, Terry's so upset with me. He moved out. I was like, girl, you do not really care. <laughs> I was like, girl, you do not really care. Meanwhile, Sheila and Troy are working out together. She tells him that she doesn't want to fall for him if he's just being nice. She was, she had the right mindset of thinking he was just a rebound and she didn't want to fall for a rebound. She had the right idea. But then he flipped it on her and said, I mean, I could have this same, this same, you know, hero syndrome with you. You could be saving me. It's like, if that's what you want us to believe, Troy, Troy was throwing down game. Okay. Child, anyway, she, you know, he, uh, you know, go across the table and kiss her. And she was like, oh, Jesus, thank you, Lord. Oh, my God. I ain't felt that in a minute. Oh, Lord. You know, and then she makes another self-deprecating joke. And he tells her, hey, stop being down on yourself. You're a beautiful, sexy woman. And if you want to change your body, then we'll change it. But stop talking down on yourself. That shit don't feel good to watch you do that, you know. So she was like, can we pray? <laughs> they gonna pray, child. Angela and Diane go to see Pat because their men are mad at them. Pat tells them they need to be vulnerable and truthful with their husbands. Pat tells them to make a list of pros and cons. And if the pros outweigh the cons, then they need to fix the shit. Y'all, the thing that aggravated to me was Diane in the fucking car. First of all, I love that song. That was one of my favorite Amel LaRue songs, child. Um... Hold up, how it go? Because that used to be one of uh, me and my ex song, girl. Hold up, let me think. How it went? Because uh, now I'm thinking about the other song in my head. I hate that. <laughs> Child, I'm about to look it up. Hold up. Y'all like the video because y'all y'all been here for a minute. It's 748 people and only 387 likes. I feel like, you know, y'all could do a little bit better than that. Um, But yeah, the Amel LaRue song. Hold up. Cause that's my girl. That was on Brave Bird, right? I think that was on Brave Bird. But anyway, y'all, her list of pros and cons. The cons, it was three or four cons, and the rest of them were uh were pros. And I was just like, girl, not you all the way to the end of the paper with the pros. That's bullshit. Ain't no man got all of them pros. Ain't no man got all of them pros, y'all. I don't, I don't care which y'all is talk all them damn pros. You a lie. You a lie. He ain't got all them pros. Cause if he did, you want you would want him and you don't want him. Hold up, y'all. Hold up. Swift as a wind song. That's it. I sing the music of an honest bird. I waited for some contradiction, but truth was ringing in your every word. And every moment since then, the one thing I can tell is that I belong with you and no one else. Yeah, that was my shit back in the day. Oh my God. Lay down those heavy burdens. Look, I ain't gonna do it, girl. But that, that used to be me and the old girl song back in the day when it came out when I was in college, girl. That was my freshman year, girl. Anyway, I'm sorry. In my life, y'all know how I do with these. Fuck with it or don't. So, 
the men are meeting with Gavin and Gavin is playing the same role as Patricia to the guys. You know, they're having the same conversation. Everybody drinking. They miss their wives. And Terry, like, I ain't going to leave forever. I'm just, I'm just, you know, teaching Diane a lesson. And Gavin was like, what, that you're going to be 36 years old dating? I'm like, 36? That's old? <laughs> they was really talking about that like that was old. 36 is not old. Oh, my God. Like, that was crazy to me. What is funny is what is a pro and con to a man versus a woman. Exactly. That's another thing. That is another thing. But, yeah, I, I be feeling like Gavin giving out bad advice to people, okay? Like, I think that Terry needed to leave Diane's ass and go find somebody that really wanted him. Um, Mike, at this point, is missing Sheila because Trina don't do shit. She don't cook. She don't clean. She just don't. <laughs> But she do know how to shop because she didn't wore out that credit card, okay? And I'm just like, well, 80-20, nigga. You got what you wanted, didn't you? Mm-hmm. Marcus gets home and Angela has cooked because she did her pros and cons list, but we ain't see it. Either way, she decided to, I mean, she laid a spread out for this nigga. They wasn't going to eat all that food. I was hungry after I saw that. But she tells him that she wants to start over. He's scared that she going to poison him. He asked that she stop talking to him like she's crazy. And I'm just like, but you also have to stop doing that. Like, you also have to stop doing that. You can't keep throwing jabs at her. And then when she responds and goes for the jugular, you, oh, you got to stop talking to me crazy. Nigga, stop gaslighting me to talk to you crazy. The fuck? He also asked for her to stop drinking, and she said she was going to stop drinking. But we know she's not going to stop drinking, girl. I don't know what's going on in this moment. Y'all just making up the fight again. Diane does her list and then runs home. I mean, not runs home, but runs to Terry's new apartment where he's unpacking. I said, not this nigga apartment being laid to the gods already. <laughs> unpacking shit. He got Pam, the assistant there. She tells him that she's dead wrong for not telling him that she tied her tubes and she took him for granted and she'll do whatever it takes to get him to come home. And he says anything. She said, yeah. And then he asked, so let me ask you a question. When you said, you know, hi, like you were surprised that the baby was mine. Were you having an affair? And she says, no, I just said that to get back at you. I'm like, you couldn't tell that she was being sarcastic when she said that. But either way, child, whatever. And so he says, okay, well, if any, if we can work out anything, um, she's pregnant. Talking about Pam with twins. And then she says, okay, well. We'll figure out a way to work it out. We'll figure out a way to work it out. And I'm just like, how long has it been since y'all broke up for you to act like you not mad about this nigga getting a bitch pregnant with twins who he just told you wasn't nothing going on with? So because you lied about getting your tube tied, that was just going to be okay? Why y'all be ready to be doormats just because you was being difficult? Like, I'm just saying, y'all, that was crazy to me. Like, why are you, Diane, why are you ready to just go along with any old thing to get this nigga back and you don't really like him? Oh, my God, y'all. Anyway, so Pam said, please take Terry home before my boyfriend beat his ass. So they meet at Pat's award ceremony. Everybody meets up. Mike brought Trina. Trina runs into Sheila in the bathroom, child. Sheila? Hmm. I wondered how I would feel when I saw you again. If I would cuss you out, stump you out in the street, whip that ass. And amazingly, all I want to do is pray for you. But don't tempt me. Stay away from the wine bottles, okay? Have a good night. <laughs> Y'all, it's like one of my favorite scenes in life. I feel like she should have hit that bitch over the head with a bottle just for the fun of it. Mike sees Troy. Surprised to see Troy there. What you doing here, Sheriff Troy? Oh, I'm here with my wife. And then Sheila walks out smaller. Where, where, where is it? <laughs> Lord. Okay, it's giving nothing but titties. It's, give, it's giving... <laughs> Nothing but titties, okay? Child, I want to know who makes Jill Scott's bras, okay? Because, Lord, them things were uh, sitting, okay? Sitting. Mike goes to talk to Gavin and Terry. And basically, when Troy comes over, he asks, did she get 
gastric bypass. Like it was a joke. And he was like, no, we just worked out together. And the way Terry and Gavin was like, they just worked out together. You know what that means? <laughs> they clown the shit out of him. So he got mad and walked away. That shit was hilarious to me. I love that. I'm glad they clowned this dumb ass. Sheila goes to say hey to the women and tells them what happened about, you know, how hard it's been. But it's her and she wakes up every day with so much joy in her heart. Because God sent her a good man, girl, after she had that shitty ass man, Mike. And I was just like, yeah, Sheila, girl, we know. You giving a speech like you found yourself, but you just found some new meat to get wrapped up in. That's just, that's just what happened, okay? But she says he's an amazing man. He doesn't criticize me, and he loves me through it all. Do you understand what I'm saying? She's talking about the Lord. Sound like she's talking about the Lord. Okay, I didn't know Jill had a bra line at Ashley Stewart. All right, now, nah. shit. I, I know I probably can't fit it, but y'all know I got big old, I have big breasts, but I'm little. Like, you know, <laughs> like I wear like a 32 double D. It's annoying, okay? But anyway, during Pat's speech, Mike is trying to talk to Sheila about how she should forgive him. Ain't that what the good books say? Do y'all hear him using the Lord to try to convince this woman to forgive him for treating her badly all of these years? She says, I did forgive you because if I did not forgive you, I would have taken it out on Troy. And he is too good for that. Okay. Do you understand? And he says, yeah, well, Gavin was telling me about this 2080 rule. And she was like, I know all about the 8020 rule. Listen, Mike, I thank you for loving me when I was the woman I was back then. But the woman that I am now wants nothing to do with you. So turn around and go back to Trina. You're 20. Okay, and and then we got Pat up there talking about, Gavin, I love you. I love you so much, Gavin. And then that was the end of the movie, girl. We definitely going to have to do Why Did I Get Married 2 next week. <laughs> we definitely going to have to do Why Did I Get Married 2 next week, y'all. We have to, okay? Yeah, misquoted the 80-20. It's ridiculous. The adulterous ass, hypocritical ass, no good ass child. The play was just as good, just didn't have as many couples. It was. It was. Sha, I think they might have been wearing the same shit when they showed up. <laughs> wearing the same outfit when they showed up to the house and everything. The play in a the movie. They don't make small bands for big boobs. It sucks. For real. What is that about? What is that about? Like, why do I have to have, like, big old bands and stuff? You know what I'm saying? Like, really? There, there's no there's no, no fabric tough enough to hold the titties up, huh? I don't believe it. Anyway, you guys, I hope y'all enjoyed this. <laughs> of course, I've seen the play. I've seen all the Tyler Perry plays, y'all. I'm from New Orleans. Y'all know Tyler Perry is originally from New Orleans, right? So when Tyler Perry first, doing, first started doing his Shitland Circuit plays... We were at them. We were live in the audience, girl. It was a thing back in the day to be passing around Tyler Perry bootleg DVDs of the plays before he actually put them out on DVD. They People would have bootlegs of them, and they would sell them at the seafood places and at the gas stations. People would come to my mama's shop, and we got the new Tyler Perry play. Y'all want to see it? And that's how people started to go and, and go see his shows live more often was because everybody would get the DVDs back in the day, like the burn DVDs. So trust me, I have seen all of the Tyler Perry plays. Okay, girl, it was a part of the culture down here to go down to the Sanger. <laughs> okay, go down to the Sanger for a Tyler Perry play, Lord. Okay, but yeah, Mike being Martel Holt, child, I absolutely think he saw this movie. It probably was one of his favorite ones. I hated Pat's part Gavin I love you then she's done with her speech such an awkward part and then the music and then it just trails off it ended weirdly but this was still one of Tyler Perry's best movies <laughs> in middle school I remember the bootleg DVD <laughs> listen y'all I had no idea he was from Nola yeah y'all didn't know that I thought everybody knew that yeah um his family is from here 
I've only met him one time at the news station. Uh, and I was like, you met my friend Ashley? Because this was like after Ashley had went out to Tyler Perry's house and all of that. Oh, I'm glad. I'm going to do Why Did I Get Married 2 next week since I watched it. But I hope y'all enjoyed this. Um, Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe if you have not. Check out my latest uploads. Go to my video page, y'all. Um, wasn't Kelly Price in the play? No. <laughs> no, it was Cheryl, uh, Cheryl Pepsi. Um, what you call them? Cheryl Pepsi. She was the one that played Sheila's character in the first one in the play. But anyway, y'all, I love y'all so much. I hope that y'all, you know, had a good, yeah, Demetria McKinney was the, uh, was Trina in the first, y'all gonna make me go watch the play downstairs because y'all know all of the plays is on BET+. Plus. But anyway, y'all, I love y'all. Thank y'all so much for coming through today. Thank y'all for loving this this series that I'm doing. I'll be adding more. So, you know, make sure y'all check out the playlist. And I'll see y'all in the next one, okay? Y'all have a good rest of y'all day. Bye.